Say that a random variable x follows a normal distribution, you want to find the probability that x takes the value 2. What's the answer? It's 0. Now, let's say that you've got another random variable, it follows an exponential distribution. You want to find the probability that x is equal to 5. What's the answer? 0. How did I know that? I know that because of this theorem. If you have a random variable that's continuous, then the probability that it takes on any particular value, real value, is 0. Note this is different from when we have a discrete random variable. So this is only for continuous random variables. Now this result makes it possible that we can be very loose with inequalities when we're looking for probabilities or doing integration. So saying that x is strictly bigger than a number a less than or equal to b, for example x is bigger than 1 and less than or equal to 5 is the same as saying x is bigger than is between 1 and 5 including those two endpoints or not including those two endpoints because the point probabilities are 0. Now note guys that it doesn't mean that the outcome can't happen. So the fact that probability x takes on a particular value 0 doesn't mean that it's impossible. It's just that it's 0. For example, time is continuous. So let x be the time that I'm going to finish this video. Then probability that I'm going to finish in 10 minutes flat is 0. That's what this says because the random variable is continuous. But I can finish at 10 in 10 minutes. Well, let's see. There's, let's see if I do. Okay, why intuitively why might this result be true before we move on to the proof? Well, consider this uh, PDF. We know it's continuous because look, this is an interval here. So x is this random variable is continuous, and I've sketched it in green here. Uh, we know that property of the PDF is that the area under the curve is 1. Well, what, how many points are there between 0 and 1? Infinitely many. Infinitely many points. 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, and so on. You can, you can, if you try to list it, there's infinitely many. So if we ascribe any positive probability, however small, to uh, a point, then that means when I integrate this thing it's going to be a hard thing to show that it integrates legitimately to 1. Okay, so now for the proof. It's good practice here for some results we've used previously. Let's have set up two events. A being the event that x, random variable x takes on particular value, little x. B, that the random variable x takes on value um, around uh, little x, including little x. Okay, so we've got this epsilon here is bigger than zero. Then by the monotonicity property, if A is a subset of B, this implies that probability of A is less than or equal to probability of B. This was proved in problem nine. Now we have the such a case here because this here is contained in this interval. This is an interval, this is a point, this point is contained in this interval. So applying this property, simply just replacing the A and B's, we have this. But this works for any epsilon bigger than zero. So if we let epsilon approach zero from the positive side, because uh, epsilon is bigger than zero, so approach zero from the positive, and this down arrow represents that, then it must still hold. So I just rewrite this first line with the limit here. Okay? Then it still holds. Now what is this expression in terms of the CDF? Well, the CDF this is saying that I want to find the probability of the area under the curve between this point here and that point there, which is slightly smaller than this. It's an interval. But it's given by this difference, right? Because this of this. Remember, I can be very loose with the, uh, since it's continuous, can be loose with the um, inequalities, but this is strictly speaking how it should be written. Okay, so if we look at this now, we can see that as epsilon approaches zero, this area here is going to be this, in the limit, is going to be the same as this area. So in the limit, it's zero. If I wanted to write out this in terms of PDF to show you this area between x and x minus epsilon, here it is. The PDF is the area under the PDF graph from this here to this here, but the lower limit approaches the upper limit, i.e. reaching a point here, and that's going to be zero in the limit. So that bit of the proof shows you that probability is less of the point is equal less than or equal to zero. But also by axiom from axioms of probability, we know that probability of the events bigger than or equal to zero. 
So now we have two inequalities here and here. So it's sandwiched between 0 and 0. So the only value that satisfies it is 0. So that's done. I'm going to show you a second proof now because we can do without uh, using the argument with epsilon. Uh, we can um, find this point x as a, as a limit of a sequence of decreasing sets that contains this x and then use another very important property of probability. So let a n denote the set of values of this interval, right? So this round means that it's strictly bigger than this value here and this closed bracket means that it includes this point here. And this interval depends on n. So I set n to integer values, 1, 0, 2, 3, and so on. Then you can see, let's look at an example where I say x is 10. And uh, so a1 would be the interval 10 minus 1 over 1 is 9 greater than 9 and less than or equal to 10. If we set look at a2, that's n is 2, now we've got minus a half here, 10 minus half is 9 and a half up to 10, so the interval has shrunk and it keeps on decreasing with n. So we have this property here, important result, property is a continuous set function, continuous is what you think it means in um, in maths, so of about functions. So if a1, a2, and so on, a sequence of decreasing events, i.e. a1 is contained in a2, is contained in a3, and so on, the limit of this sequence is given by the intersections. So it's a countable number of intersections of the ans. And we can represent it as a picture here. So a1 here contains a2, contains a3, and so on. It's getting smaller, 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 smaller. So what's the common thing to all those sets? That's the limit. And that thing common to the sets could be just a point or points. In this case, it's, we show it's going to be equal to the point x. So here, what we have here is the limit here, because uh, we just said that this a n is a decrease is a is a set and it's decreasing in n. So the limit is given by this guy here. Let's write it out, and you can see that she shrink, 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 shrink. The interval shrinks, and the common point to all of those intervals is going to be just one value. That's x. That's because of this here closed bracket contains this x. Okay, so using probability as a continuous set function property, point my pen right here. That's what I'm looking right here. This is the result I'm going to use. Um, so if x is equal, the random variable x is equal to particular value, then that means the random variable x is between these two values. Okay, for this right here. So I'm writing this in, and then this guy using this result here, I write like that. Let's go to the next line like that. Okay, that's this side is over here, and now I'm pretty much back to the um, first proof. So that this is this, and then the limit. So you see, I've just we've got uh, one over n instead of epsilon now. Okay, so uh, that's that's the key result uh, proof today. And did I do it in ten minutes?